Probably one of the best teams in the country. We've seen that this year. We're continuing to see it on both sides as Nick Slight gets ready to kick things off here for the purple and white. Early set inside, denied by the Cameron Thorne, something he's been doing a lot of lately. Camden Gianni sends it down as well. Tip over, Thorne keeps it up, slight. Hustle plays have been huge for the Lopes. Rogers finds a sideline for the first kill of the night. Number two, heavily a serving specialist, but moved into a new role this year. Yeah, absolutely. And Carter Rogers is one of the key players, especially from the last couple of games. One that's in the news about, you know, his ability to get in there and do the job that he's been told to do and, and do it well for his team. Early stoppage here. I mean, no chance we have a challenge green card on the first play of the night, right? There it is. <laughs> I, I'm looking to see if he is going to go with the challenge or if he's going to hold off. It looks like he will. Jeff Nygaard, storied coach, been around USC for many years, is, likes to keep that green card in his hand and <laughs> be ready for it at all times. Near side ball, Klein, well done by Thorne. He put himself in a good spot. Gianni almost finds the ground, not quite. Rogers keeps it up, well done. Slight to Gianni. Tip off the block, looking for the back corner. Excellent play to keep things alive right there. Klein right at Gianni once more. An early rally from both sides, kept up again. Our side ball set down, but an antenna violation, so point to GCU. Matt Worley thought possibly went off a, UC, a USC player into the antenna, but not going to get the point, and we're knotted up at one apiece. Dylan Klein to serve. Slight near side ball. Gianni sent down. Hickman's in a good spot. Thorn to Gianni again. And you don't see the double set down a lot in men's volleyball. Typically they go for power, but Gianni, so athletic, jumps his head, you know, feet above the net. And he just says, you know what, I'll just simply tap this one down. Well, and he does. Intelligence to be able to recognize the open spot in the court. Service error there from the Lopes. Something they've done a better job this year at avoiding. That was kind of one of their Achilles heels over the past couple of years. Matt Worley is an aggressive serving head coach, but he has moments where he not questions it. He never doubts if he wants his team to serve aggressively, but you wonder how much frustration can build when you have so many service errors. Early kill sent down there from the USC side. Is there a more iconic look than the yellow and red of the of USC? You know, I, I, I can only think of one, maybe. The, the blue and yellow okay. from UCLA. Yeah, I would agree with you there. Both those California schools, so iconic and so dominant in volleyball. UCLA picked up their first national championship in the last 20 years, last year in 2023, to go alongside their other 19, which leads men's volleyball by 15, the second closest is UC Irvine. As Cameron Thorne looks to get things going here. Set down beautifully. Excellent work there from Wesley Smith. He's 6'11", and he is all of 6'11". Sometimes you see those guys out there listed close to seven feet, and you're like, well, is he really? No, he is all of 6'11". They might actually be underappreciating his height. <laughs> Service error this time from USC, now heading to the Lopes. Gianni with a power serve right at the awaiting hands of the USC set back over. Gianni, slight. Hickman into the net and down, point to USC. Service coming this time to the back corner. Back row attack, Rogers. too much. They like that back row attack. You don't see it as much in women's volleyball as you do on the men's side of things. And men's volleyball, you'll see a lot of it, specifically with players like Carter Rogers, the athleticism. 
on a different level from number two. Ball into the net that time from USC. Already earlier in this game, and it's such a close score. I mean, I I'd said at the beginning of the game it was going to be a close one and competitive, and it already has with, with many long plays happening. But both sides dominating in the best way that they can. And the Lopes adjusting to the crowd, a little bit nervous on the right side if you can feel the energy, but still just locking in and continuing to play it play by play. Wesley Smith, now to serve. I want to correct myself from earlier, too. Misspoke Pepperdine with five national championships. I don't know if we have any Pepperdine fans tuning in tonight, but if we do, I don't want to give UC Irvine the credit for the, those five titles that they have. Ball up and down from Jackson Hickman. Well done from the back row. UC Irvine has four, too, so we're going to uh, one extra. Yeah, yeah. Gave him a little more credit. GCU faces off with UC Irvine. Irvine almost every year. Fellow MPSF opponent. Face off against them in the volleyball invitational in Hawaii in just a couple of weeks as a ball to the GCU Antelopes ties things back up at seven apiece. You know, Houston, you talk about Hawaii. I actually watched one of their streams earlier today, and they had this really interesting story where some of the volleyball players actually play chess right before their game to prepare mentally and to kind of just clear their minds and continue the competitive spirit from chessboard to volleyball court. I just thought that was really interesting because most players, you know, listen to music or, you know, try to get in the zone other ways. But University of Hawaii men's volleyball gets down to some good chess games. Another point there from Dylan Klein. A couple of kills already in the night for him. And yeah, so many interesting metaphors back and forth. Sport like volleyball compared to the game of chess. So much strategy, piece after piece being taken. Cameron Thorne up and down, well done. 8-8 eight, eight goes the score. And yeah, you wonder almost, there's a calming essence about chess as well. There's obviously nerves and things like that, but you wonder how much of it is similar to listen to a Justin Bieber song before the game or whatever it is. It's just those pregame traditions that change from game to game, player to player. Another Dylan Klein kill, 9-8. Did you just reveal your hand, Houston, that maybe you would get down to some Justin Here's Bieber right thing, before? Here's the thing, Bella. I saw a Jalen Brunson, New York Knicks star, first time All-Star this year, on Jimmy Fallon the other night discussing how he listens to Justin Bieber <laughs> before every game. Jackson Hickman still alive from Klein. Taps up, slight can't control it, and two-point advantage now. But yeah, I, I saw that, and I was so interested because I think it's hilarious to me to think about an NBA player going to fight for their life on the basketball court, just jamming to some never say never, <laughs> you know. You can't beat that, you, I don't think. I don't, I mean, to each his own. Exactly. <laughs> uh, no shame for me or Jalen Brunson. We're, we're on the same level basketball skill-wise as well. Oh, wow, yeah. Service error from USC. We got a close one so far here in this first set. You typically see that from MPSF neighboring opponents. These guys are just so equally skilled. Carter Rogers with that roll shot. You don't see that from him too often. Slight can't pick that one up. 11-9. Something we saw in past years from this GCU team in moments like this where they would be in these nerve-wracking games back home for the first time in a while. You start to wonder and get a little nervous about the fact that you're down. You start to be thinking about future sets as opposed to focusing on this one. And that's where the experience comes into play so much. Kept over, well done by Rogers. Up and down for Wesley Smith, his third kill tonight already. And this GCU team, it, it doesn't seem the same to me. They look just more poised in these moments. You see him down three. Matt Worley's just gonna call a timeout have some conversations with his team and say, hey, we got some things to figure out, and they'll be ready to use. I think it's just a happy coincidence. Yeah, I love it. Ball on your side. Jackson Hickman, you love out of the timeout. Matt Worley's squad is so effortless coming out of timeouts. They do such a good job of composing themselves in these moments. That's a big swing, going down four in an early set, much different than just having a two-point deficit here early in tonight's match. Cooper Herndon into the game as well. Her one point and then checks back out. 
And another kill right there from Riley Hain. Service right at Herndon. Gianni kept alive somehow. Slight roll shot to Gianni. The hustle from Austin Stewart is not quite enough. Tried to slide all the way close to the front row. Couldn't quite get there. Gianni now to serve. It's patented. Long wind up, doesn't quite work that time. 14-11. GC returns home today after six straight on the road. Face off today against USC and tomorrow. Those iconic back-to-back -back matchups on the weekend, Friday, Saturday. Wardlow kept alive this time by Duker. Rogers somehow keeps it alive, well done. Big opportunity here for the Lopes. Hickman into the block. Herndon a good job this time. Slight the fake hit. Oh, tell you what. Perfectly planned. The execution was just not there. And you see Slight's frustrated. That was a gorgeous play from Slight to fake the attack and then send the roll shot over to or the uh, slide ball, I should say, back to Gianni and just couldn't quite execute. Hain with the serve, near side, Hickman. Big point, almost coming, and it will find the bottom of the floor. Duker thought about it, but didn't quite throw down his body and go after that one. 15-12 now. Hickman looking for that spot where there wasn't a whole lot of guys in zone two, but couldn't quite get there. Off the block of slight and out. So 16-12 and an early first set advantage for USC. USC definitely taking more control in this game already off the bat. And that's what it really is about, is about how strong your offense is to almost shut down the your opposite's defense. Gianni off the block and out. And you see right there, Big slight with that ball to Rico Warlow. They are so consistent from that setter to middle blocker play. And right there, the timing was just all off. And so something's just a little out of sync right now for the purple and white. But no doubt, we've seen this earlier in matches before. They struggle oftentimes right out the get-go. But once they get going, it's dangerous. They obviously don't want to drop a first set. But they got a lot of confidence no matter how this first set goes. Off the next slight block and down 17-13. Yeah, you talk about that connection, Houston. I, I can definitely see already from this USC. They're they're coming at it connected, and they're all in synchronous harmony. And the Lopes are just really struggling to all come together as a as a collective force to push past this this force that's coming at them. Slight for Cameron Thorne. That one was perfectly executed. That one to Cameron Thorne, but the one earlier to Rico Wardlow dipping his percentage, which is something that he doesn't want to see because last year he set the program hitting percentage record at .536. And he thought, well, I'd like to have the record twice. This year he's hitting a point, .546, .10% better than he did last year. And so he's hoping to possibly continue that, but not doing what he needs to so far tonight. 18-14 now to USC. Slight for Thorne. Well done. Right at Austin Stewart, the 6'1 junior out of Manhattan Beach, Miracosta High School. Couldn't quite deal with it. Carter Rogers. Nobody throws the ball higher on a serve. Up and down perfectly. A lot of swagger right now coming from the Trojans. Kyle Paulson. Man, is he having a good year. The senior from Long Beach. You wonder if he grew up as a Long Beach State fan and then thought, no, I'm taking that traitor arc. Not necessarily a traitor. I shouldn't put that title on <laughs> oh, Kyle. No. And just a service ace. Just an alternative option. 
We mark him down. We discussed him before the game as a heavy server. 21 service aces, 42 service errors. So every two service errors he picks up, he picks up a service ace. Prager, Gary Sato, Paul Martinez. Paul Martinez in his first year as an assistant coach with the Trojans. Prager been there for five years, and Sato and Nygaard joined the club together nine years ago and have been pretty solid ever since. Herndon digs it up, and it is controlled easily by Wesley Smith. Not exactly what you want coming out of the timeout. We talked about how good GCU has been out of timeouts right there, not the execution they were looking for. Wesley Smith having himself a night already. Great serve, controlled by Hickman. Slight rack back to 16. Jackson! Nearly dug up by Klein, but couldn't quite get there. 21-16. We'll see a Jordan Lucas entrance for the first time tonight. Jordan Lucas had a much heavier role last year with the program. This year turned more into a serving specialist, but also has moments in that outside hitter position as well. Looking to make his stake on tonight's game. Your side ball, slights there. Right back to Smith. Puts it in a good spot, 22-16. Elopes receiving right now, just isn't quite where it needs to be. Too many errors on that portion, but you gotta credit USC, they've come in and you almost wonder, you're, you're thinking of yourself as a program as stored as USC saying, this young program, you, you know, GCU maybe got some fire out of the field right now, let's come in and upset them, see what we can do. And right now they're playing with a lot of passion, 22-17 after that error. Well, you know, there's two sides to the competitive facade, if you will, because then there's one where the Lopes are coming in trying to protect their number two ranking, and then there's the other where USC is coming in saying, you know what, we can knock those number two Lopes off that, their pedestal that they're on right now. And so there's that competitive allure from both sides. Almost <laughs> somehow kept alive. This has been a chaos for about 30 seconds. Hickman just smacks at it. <laughs> it rolls out. It's one of those moments where you're, you've seen a million plays, but it rolls off and then goes out of bounds, and you're like, wait, whose point is that? <laughs> like, I don't see that very often. But GCU cuts it to four, and now Jeff Nygar, the UCLA 95. Gianni. Too much, and just like that, we are at three points. Challenge coming from Jeff Nygar, the first of the night. Looking for a tip. Let's see if we've got an angle of it. Well, last year was a pretty good year for Nick Slight. 1,019 assists, that's not easy to do. If it's a tip here, it would be on Jackson Hickman's left hand as we'll revisit that slight conversation here in just a second after a slight break. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Uh, these ones are, if there's not consistent, clear, evidence and I don't know that ring finger of Jackson Hickman we might be it's close I don't know is it enough to t overturn it I'm not sure my gut says no but Lord knows I've been wrong before <laughs> I, I mean it looks just at the trajectory of where Hickman is his body is placed it doesn't look like he's touched the ball and honestly the ball doesn't really redirect after the moment where his hands are close to it so i'm gonna say from this perspective from viewing this video and i'm hopeful that the down umps will agree that i i think that the call remains no touch on this on this call well really quick i love this shot here look at the shoe game of <laughs> usc's coaching staff are you kidding me with that <laughs> <laughs> the red and black classic Jordan's on. That is a good look. And another assistant coach walks in with him. <laughs> I tell you, I need a pair of those. Oh, yeah. In pure charcoal black. <laughs> Man, that's 
Sorry, I need a second to refocus on the game. Uh. I just, my, the sneaker head in me really got distracted there. Those are slick. Here's the call. No tip. Point GCU and it remains. And this is a big moment, folks. Lopes were down as much as five, and now they've cut it to three, and all the momentum in the GCU arena with the antelopes of purple and white. A couple of Discover trips here, plenty of UC USC fans, and it's packed. It's packed here in the GCU arena. The far side ball, up and down. So all that, and we just match points after a Riley Hain fourth kill. Two away for USC, six away from a match, or set point, excuse me, for the Lopes. Five away to take us to extra points. Herndon looks for Hickman. Roll shot, perfect spot. Deficit cut back to three. Hickman's not necessarily the top server as far as statistics go on the team, but man, has he got a, a power shot from back there, and we'll see if he can will the Lopes to tie things up here with the serve, tip off the net. Ball up and down. They can't contain him. The Lopes cannot contain Wesley Smith right now. His size would tell you he's a little bit older, but he's a freshman out of Carlsbad, California, La Costa Canyon. They produce volleyball players, I tell you what. He is such a strong force of nature from the USC offense. Number two hitting percentage in the MPSF, which is actually just under Rico Wardlow for hitting percentage in the conference still. Right on cue, Rico Wardlow says, I'm gonna make you look smart, Bella. Picks up his first kill tonight. It's always nice when that happens. Now Jared Anderson will check in to serve. One of those moments where you're in a tough spot, 24-21. Put a not as experienced guy into the game and say, hey, show me what you can do in a big moment. This is one of those moments where you're fighting, not for right now, but for a look at the future. And just a miss hit by Anderson. So 25-21 goes the first set. Number 10, USC comes into the Global Credit Union Arena and shuns the fans to start things off. A lot of volleyball left to be played. We'll be right back. You have got to find a way to win this second set. Do not want to be in a situation where you have to pull off a reverse sweep. Herndon. That'll help. Cameron Thorne says enough of the Trojans. It's Lopes time, 1-0 to start off set number two. And everybody gets to sit down. Carter Rogers with a good serve right at Stewart. Rogers a good dig. Herndon goes. Hickman from the back row, kept up by Stewart again. Several digs already on the night. Far side ball, Klein. Perfect spot, a momentum killer. Would have been dangerous if the Lopes would have rallied off three or four to kick off this second set. Dylan Klein stops the momentum. That's a big point early here in set number two. Slight to Gianni. Far side ball. No dice that time for Duker and Cameron Thorne. Two kills already in this second set. Well, the Lopes were 16 and three at home last year and they don't play nearly as many games at home this year. Barely, I mean, not even double digits as Thorne plays it over. And we've talked to them a lot about their impact of playing on the road as opposed to playing at home. It's definitely a different atmosphere. Klein from the back row. Perfect, and Jackson Hickman comes out of that in a little bit of that pain on his right wrist, but he shakes it off pretty quickly. Hope he's all right. But you look at not just GCU's men's volleyball team, but their teams in general across the board. The men's basketball record is much better at home. The women's basketball record is much better at home. There's something about this Global Credit Union Arena, especially when you've got all the Havocs going crazy for as much publicity and press as they get. The players deserve just as much praise for stepping up in those moments and playing good volleyball, basketball, soccer, whatever it is. And they would love a second set victory here. Gianni with a power serve. 
Smith, good dig right there from Gianni. Far side ball, too much. Was looking to paint the tape, but couldn't quite do it. 4-2 goes the lead for the Antelopes. Believe it or not, two is the biggest lead of the night so far for wow. GCU. Typically, you're in the middle or the beginning of the second set, and you're looking at five or six being their heavi heaviest lead, but not tonight. Gianni tip off the net. What a pancake that is right there from Kayla Blanchett. Slight tries to just play it over quickly. Far side ball. Duker, too much. And several miss hits already to start this second set. That was the difference. It was just four points between them in that first set, and those miss hits really came back to bite the lopes. And then so far to start this thing off, I mean, Duker had plenty of time, plenty of space, and just couldn't execute. And it's 5-2 GCU, Gianni. That ball just splits everybody on the other side of the court and goes out. I mean, you can hear the oohs and ahs after he hits the ball because it's so strong and so direct. And you can really tell why he is a statistical matchup in kills per set, ranked third in the MPSF. Side out Lopes after another service error. 6-3. Well, the Lopes enter tonight at 11-0. That's a pretty good start. Last year, they started out 20-2 before losing six to end their year. Not in a row, but six games towards the end of the season. Hmm. Ended at 22-8. and eight. Six and six in conference play. Just a couple of non-conference losses. Ten win ranked, ranked wins last year with sweeps of UC Irvine. And last year, swept USC. And USC is not wanting that to happen in back-to-back -back years. They will simply not allow it. 7-4. Now Wardlow heads back to serve. Missing some guys. No Christian Janke, no Cole Udall. It changes the atmosphere of the team. But when you return guys like Cam Gianni, Rico Wardlow, Slight, Hickman, I mean, those are all Americans. Klein blocked. Lopes have struggled to block Klein tonight, but second set, they're having a little bit more success. Carter Rogers sent down, and it rolls out of the net. Slight is really frustrated with the up ref, something he did not agree with. A lot of the fans as well were looking for a call. I believe possibly a double hit on USC, but they didn't get it. And not worth challenging at this point. Service coming from Smith. Slight far side of Rogers. Perfect for number two. His role has changed. Serving specialist, freshman, sophomore year, and now a much different role. And he has taken it and done very well with it. Side ball to Klein, finds the middle of the court. Blanchett picks up another assist. And now on cue, we'll head back to serve out of Brentwood, Tennessee, the freshman from Ravenwood High School. Ravenwood High School, that sounds like either a Harry Potter house or a show on whatever as <laughs> Carter Rogers shuts me up with a beautiful block into zone five, just perfect execution. Reminded me of Riverdale. That's that's what yes. I was looking for there, Bella. Yes, it's okay. What's the name of that? What's the name of that TV network that all those shows are on? CW Network. CW Ravenwood High School. <laughs> so, does that not sound like a CW show? It sure does. Oh, Rogers wow. with another good serve. Far side ball to Klein, too much, and oh, a couple of Havocs hitting the head. I'm gonna get the medics out, make sure they're okay. That one almost hit America's favorite mascot, Thunder, too. <laughs> that would have been a disaster. <laughs> there's, there's shout out Tyler Kilgore in the middle there. I hope he's okay. Oh, I'll tell you what, they really thought that ball landed in. <laughs> Matt Worley thinking about challenging it, and he will at the last second. It's a big play right here. Could extend. Was out. So 10 7. I think the correct call. So Dylan Klein heads back to serve. <laughs> Lopes, the only undefeated team in the nation, extending their record to 11 0 and a 2 0 MPSF 
play start after two sweeps of BYU. Gianni. Nick Slight was in the correct position and slid up. And wasn't quite there to corral that ball, 10-8. Paulson, Blanchett, Hayne, Klein, all the guys that are circle your spot board players are contributing heavily tonight. Wesley Smith as well. Slight, and you know, somehow Camden Gianni puts it over. Your side ball. Well done. Perfect shot right at Camden Gianni. Hits him in the shoulder and down. So four straight for USC. As Dylan Klein has back to serve again. Another one goes the way of the red and yellow. I would not be surprised if Matt Worley calls a timeout to reassess here. Too much from Klein, that'll help. 11-9 goes the score. USC started out their conference play after two wins over Concordia. 10 and four now. They boast wins over number seven, UC Irvine, number 14, Ball State, and win over UC, or, uh, San Diego as well. Number 19, the Lopes beat them earlier in the year as well. So interesting getting to see a sport where so many teams play each other and then play teams that play teams that they've played and back and forth and back and forth. You really start to understand the importance of matchups as a service ace right there. Nobody stepped to the ball, the old campfire. Everyone's sitting around roasting marshmallows and nobody steps to the ball. And a service ace for Kyle Paulson, continuing what he has done all year long. Picks up his 23rd service ace, his second of the night. Paulson right at Rogers, slight far side. Hickman, they needed that one, and they get it. PA announcer Paul, the news are trying to get the Havocs into it. If there was ever a time for a big Cam and Gianni serve, it'd be right now, and they don't quite get it off the tip of the net. Blocked down and slight. Doing a little bit of talking after that one. Gives a thumbs up to the <laughs> up ref, says, I know I'm, I'm good. Look at this right here. Sent down right back at him and he says, yeah, I'll let you know about it. Rocking some swagger right now. Canvin Gianni, a service ace from number one. There it is, folks. Camden Gianni showing up and doing exactly what he sought to do because he is really the ace on this team. He knows how to how to serve the ball. Another really good serve. Oohs and ahs from the crowd. And another one from Gianni. And after two aces from CG, point throughout the night, no doubt. 12-15 goes the score out of the media timeout. USC did not take one. Although they got kind of lucky with the timing right there because it was four straight from the Lopes and they were in dire need of a conversation. 16-12. Carter Rogers had a career high on February 17th against BYU. Career high, six blocks and four aces while tying a career best with 10 kills in the 3-0 win over BYU. He's hitting a career high .39 in 27 sets this season. His role is elevated and he has responded. There are two things you can do when you get pushed into a new role and the coach trusts you with some more responsibilities. You can kind of curl up and get nervous and not step up into the moment or you can do what Carter Rogers has been doing and absolutely dominate and talk about a highlight. Rico Wardlow says, let me introduce you to this kill, what a play. And that's so interesting because that ball is sent over in the direction of Carter Rogers. Rico Wardlow almost steals it from him and pats it down. I mean, Rico Wardlow comes in with such strength 
I mean, he's number one in the hitting percentage in the MPSF right now, and there's no doubt about it. He's so wise in what he chooses to hit in the location and the strength that comes behind it. <laughs> this time, Cameron Thorne with a beautiful rejection right there. Absolutely, Cameron Thorne, number two in blocks per set, MPSF. These are players that are high in the MPSF statistics, and they are showing up and showing out today, especially with those last two plays. MPSF Defensive Player of the Week award from Cameron Thorne last week, his first ever, and very deserving of that title. Rogers picks it up. Slight, far side, Rogers off the block and down, Lopes in a groove right now, 19-13. Jordan Lucas checks in and some success comes. The past two points with him on the floor. Number 22 making an immediate. Lopes looking to move to 12-0 here today. 2-0 at home, 6-0 away, 2-0 in conference play. Ball up and down, well done that time from Wesley Smith, his sixth kill of the night. Rico Wardlow, Cooper Herndon rocking that purple libero jersey. Back in the game, six points away from a second set victory for GCU. USC with a five point deficit right now, trying to claw their way back into it are the Trojans. Smith after the kill. Slight far side, Rogers denied. What a play from Kayla Blanchett, the 6 5 setter, showing the power. Blanchett, not typically known, is the freshman from Brentwood for his blocking abilities, but right there, what a play, making a statement as USC needs to grab all the momentum they can here in Phoenix. Rogers, right at Smith, somehow kept it live. What a rally we have here. Slight, your side ball. Gianni from the back row, denied again! Oh my goodness, Dylan Klein and Kyle Paulson combined for that one. And just like that, three straight points out of the break for USC. Doing their best GCU impression right now defensively. USC has GCU's number right now. I mean, they are everywhere where they believe that GCU is going. They can predict every moment. And that's why their blocking game has been so strong is they're reading their offense. They're reading Lopes' offense and, and saying, here's our US, USC defense. Wesley Smith into the net, kills all that momentum. That is a... Big play for GCU, they catch a break. Jeff Nygaard does such a good job, the ninth year coach out of the timeout to grab three straight points and then a killer right there. The service error, that's what that'll do in the sport of volleyball. That one's off the head of Riley Hain and somehow kept alive. Jackson Hickman to Gianni, sent down again. Offensively, the Trojans are on another level right now as they cut the deficit to three once more. That's where they had been lacking so far to start the night. Even after picking up that first set defensively, they weren't where they wanted to be. And right now, they have significantly improved in that area. We'll see if they can piece it together and find a way to snatch this second set. Herndon off the serve. Slight to Thorne. Perfect. Perfect execution. Setter to middle blocker combination. We've seen that from Slight and Wardlow for the past couple of years, but now Thorne stepping into that role as well has done a really good job. Well, I think GC is having a really good use of that connection right there in the middle because that's a, a big point place where they're getting a lot of their points tonight. And I think that they continue, if they can continue to use that to their abilities and also use their outside hitters because that's where we're, they're having a, an issue. And so they need to understand how to fix and adjust with that. Klein with the serve. Slight to Thorne. Perfect again. 22-18 after the Carter Rogers service error and then the Dylan Klein serve controlled well by the Lopes. Jacob Cece now into the game for GCU, rocking that 2-5. Another one of those moments. Lopes putting some trust in a younger player. Step up in a big moment. Can't control that one, can the Lopes? Lead cut back to three again. And this is not who you want behind the service line if you are an Antelopes fan. Kyle Paulson comes into tonight with 21 service aces and then he's already got three more here tonight. A hat trick of him so far. And he'd love a fourth right here in a big moment looking to cut the deficit to just one in this second set. 
Paulson right at Rogers, who contains it well. Far side, Hickman. Another good dig this time from the Trojans. And into the antenna, awkwardly. Not really anything Noah Roberts could do there after the miss hit from Blanchett. So the Lopes pick up another one, and 22-19 goes the score. Gianni. Right at the awaiting Austin Stewart. Miscommunication there from USC, and it presents a free ball for the Lopes, which Slight just plays over, and then a beautiful dig from Blanchett. And now Gianni keeps it up. Another one of those patented rallies here on the Global Credit Union Arena ends in a Jackson Hickman kill. 23-19, Lopes two away. Trojans need to talk about it after a couple in a row from the Antelopes. USC making see what behind that line when it's set point. Right at Dylan Klein who keeps it alive. Rogers can't get there. 24-20. This is what the Lopes have done all year though in these second sets. Even if they haven't looked great in that first set, they've found a way to give themselves a little bit of cushion towards the end of the second so they can feel a little more relaxed and find a way to close this one out. Yeah, the Lopes have definitely had to fight for this one. And so it's down to one point, but they also have to stay strong in this late part of the set. Service ace, that's not what you need. Noah Roberts checks in and picks up a big service ace in a big moment. When you're up four on a set point, you're like, okay, we got a little cushion. When you start putting together a couple points and you realize, okay, three more and we're going to extra points, it scares you a little bit. Slight for Hackman. Hickman, I should say, looking to end it, and he does, 25-21. to end off setting up seven attempts, seven kills, perfection so far for the reigning MPSF Defensive Player of the Week. Jackson Hickman doing his part as well, nine kills. Gianni and Rogers follow with three apiece. Nick Slight gets us going in set number three. We're tied one apiece and a possible <laughs> fake hit or miss hit right there. Some confusion, it's just an unlucky play because it looked like if that was intentional, that's one of the greatest plays I've ever seen. If it was unintentional, that's pure luck. But either way, it's 1-0 to start things off. And everybody in the Global Credit Union Arena stands, except for a couple USC fans that have no interest in abiding by the GCU rules. Gianni to the back corner. And now everybody will sit down. I mean, you said that there are some USC fans sitting down, but there were some standing. Yeah. Hey, I love it. You come into a new arena, you're not familiar, whatever, you know, it's 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 a part of the fun here in Phoenix. Back row, Klein kept up, well done. Herndon, Jackson Hickman says no! What a play from Jackson Hickman, 1-6. Puts the lead to 2-1 to one for the Antelopes. A big momentum play here early in this second set, all coming off of a great defensive play from Nick Slight to keep that ball alive. Good serve from Carter Rogers. Set down again. Cameron Thorne says, I'm the MPSF reigning defensive player of the week for a reason. 3-1, four blocks already on the night for CT. You can just see the passion from his face after he walks off the court with that play he just did and the, the energy in the room is building up for the Lopes. Yeah, there is a different type of energy in this room right now after a couple of those big serves. Going back and forth, Carter Rogers with a miss hit. You can you really tell he wanted that one. That one just finds the sideline and down. 3-3 three, three now. Service coming from Kyle Paulson, who's already got three service aces on the night. Once a fourth. Into the net instead. Ah yes, the old announcer's curse. Saw Steph Curry one time who shoots about 99% from the free throw line. 
miss a free throw purely because an announcer was talking about how talented he is from the free throw line. And he looked over at Mike Breen and stared him down because he knew that was the only reason he missed that free throw. <laughs> Slight to Hickman, cross court, perfectly executed. Jackson Hickman in his bag, as the kids say. Am I allowed to say that yet? Am I at an age where I can say that? Uh, in, um, I don't know about that. We'll see. We'll see. Either way, well done from Jackson Hickman in the lead. Goes to two for GCU. Cameron Thorne heads back behind the service line. Lopes riding out this lineup right now with Thorne, Rogers, Slight, Hickman, Wardlow, Gianni. Really enjoying what they're working with right now. Wesley Smith picks up another big kill, 5-4. It's Noah Roberts, Dylan Klein, Austin Stewart, Kayla Blanchett, Kyle Paulson, and Wesley Smith on the other side of things for USC. You also see Riley Hayne make a substitution in right there. Rico Wardlow wants that percentage to continue to rise to break his own record of a .536, highest hitting percentage in program history. Gianni back to serve. Looking for that back corner, but a little bit too much from CG this time. So now Riley Hain, 6'6", outside hitter, the sophomore. Second player on this team out of Hawaii. And then Jack Duker, a couple of high school battles before becoming teammates. Herndon can't quite pancake that one out of the court. And we're tied at six apiece, just like that. USC takes the first punch and counters. And we are tied early in set number two. Riley Hayne, Wardlow, slight. Hickman. 7-6 after another Jackson Hickman kill. Gives him 12 on the night. Hickman with the serve into the net, and any momentum that the Lopes had is snuffed. Smith to serve, Kyle Paulson back into the game. As far as height goes, USC definitely has the advantage when you're running a unit that has 6-11, 6-11, Slight to Rogers. That ball is hit off of the antenna and out. Rodgers just wasn't quite in the position he wanted to be for that kill. 8-7 goes the score. Smith looking to continue to do work from behind that service line. Slight. Gianni tip off the block and a net violation. So point to the Lopes and we're back tied once more. Houston, this game is so competitive. I mean, we are seeing both sides, you know, have some really good triumphant moments and some strong points, but they also have some weaknesses that are showing throughout this game, which I think is what really makes a game so competitive, is to see that both sides have faults and which side is going to be able to overcome those faults as the game is going on. Our side ball. Now here to Rogers, looking for the cross court, and tell you what, Austin Stewart is in a perfect spot right there. And it results in a Dylan Klein kill, 9-8. And the Trojans reclaim the lead. Rico Wardlow is having himself a night here as well. The senior from Bolinbrook, Illinois. 65 kills entering tonight. You think at that .536 percentage as there's another side out to the Lopes. And you wonder, okay, well, what's the minimum criteria? How many kills are we talking? It's not like he did it on 20 kills, folks. 191 kills last year and a .536 hitting percentage. I mean, that is incredibly impressive. It's out from Noah Roberts and the Lopes. Go back up two. Slight to serve. Slight gave us pretty much the same remarks that Carter Rogers did, just talking about how close this team is. He said the team chemistry 
is like one big family. We want to do this for all 21 guys on the squad. We kind of do everything together, and that's all you can really ask for. Another stoppage conversation happening between the down ref and Jeff Nygar. Jackson Hickman said a similar thing. Said the team chemistry is amazing. We hold each other to a high standard on the court and push each other. But we're all best friends off the court and have a good time together on these long travel trips. We all trust each other, so it makes the chemistry so much easier. They are more motivated than ever, even though they are number two in the country. They want to prove who they are and get to that number one spot. Tonight would help. Too much from Gianni. Looking for a tip off the block of Paulson but clearly doesn't feel too strongly about it because he's not in Worley's ear asking him to challenge it. As they are sometimes. Sometimes. Klein right at Herndon. Slight to Thorne. And <laughs> what an adjustment from Cameron Thorne. The timing was clearly off. Thorne jumped about a half a second too early. But towards the end of his jump, he finds a way to just adjust and tap it to the left. Well done from Cameron Thorne. Our side ball, Hain, too much. And no tip. So 12-11, or 12-10 I should say, lopes back up two once more. Lopes like playing on the road, which is good because they do a lot of it this year. Slight to Thorne. That was better execution. 13-10, you can tell right there, he is at the perfect tip of his jump as he gets ready to hit this ball. The thing that separates a play like that from the other one is a lot of times hitters have to focus on Carter Rogers out of the timeout to serve. Roll shot from Rogers instead of the power he typically goes with. Blocked by Thorne again. Three lopes arise. Herndon gets there, Rogers is there. Slight, sends it over. Can the Lopes capitalize? Free ball for USC, still alive. And now Slight, far side ball. What a set that is to Gianni. Roll shot, kept alive by Stewart. And after all that, it ends at a point to USC off of the Jackson Hickman net violation. Looks like he kind of just tripped into the net. Thirteen eleven. That's a frustrating one as a fan too. You see all the momentum going back and forth, and then it ends on a net violation, and you have all your energy and momentum hoping for something more. Ball over the head of Cooper Herndon. Fourteen eleven. The biggest sigh of relief off a of play like that is you're just happy to see that Jackson Hickman's not hurt after tripping, it's very easy when you're up close to the net to roll an ankle on another player or something like that. Good to see he's all right. Thorne gets there, so does Rogers. Wardlow taps it over and Wesley Smith. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Hustle play after a hustle play from GCU and Wesley Smith just, oh man, that is just, that hurts. Absolutely, Wesley Smith just showing up and showing out for his team today. You can get kind of complacent in a moment like that, though, because you're so awestruck from the hustle. But good job from Smith to just focus on the ball and track it. Good job there from Roberts to dig it up. And Hayne picks up a kill at 14-13. Noah Roberts. Another young kid on this USC team, the Red Cert freshman out of Seal Beach, California, Los Alamitos High School. Enrico Wardlow with another kill. Wardlow picks up his fourth. He's hitting above his average right now too, which means that thing will continue to soar, which is about all he can ask for at this point in the season. Typically conference play starts and your percentages start to dip as you face tougher opponents. Not for Rico Wardlow. 
he just seems to get better and better and better no matter who he plays. Slight. Back row, Gianni. Noah oh, Roberts took that one right in the chin. Be feeling that one when they face off tomorrow morning at 2 o'clock on ESPN+. Plus. That one will be in the Antelope Gymnasium where the Lopes played for a decade or two before moving to the newly named Global Credit Union Arena. What a dig from Hickman. Gianni, Rogers. Yeah, and that one's on Camden Gianni. He looks over at Carter Rogers and says, my bad, buddy. He just didn't quite get the set that he was hoping for. And Carter Rogers kind of had to adjust on it, more of a spin ball. 16-5 is another big point. We are just tracking back and forth between one to two points here in this third set. Too much on that one, and we go back to two. Wardlow now to serve. Lopes jumped from their seventh spot in the preseason ranking, which was their highest ever preseason nod, all the way up to where they sit now at number two. Klein picks up another kill. Gianni, Wardlow, Slight, Hickman, all Americans on this squad. Looking to repeat that 22 and eight success that they had last year. That was their best record ever, and they're on pace to do even better than that. Slight, we've been waiting for it, and there is the center dump from Nick Slight, perfectly executed from number seven. He's a veteran for a reason, people. Well, I mean, he does it so well. He fully looks like he's going to set that to Cameron Thorne right there in the middle and just slides it on in there. Your side ball, Klein off of the head of Rogers. Hey, whatever works, works. Hickman. To Gianni, fakes the kill attempt and just pokes it over. Now to Roberts, block to the back corner. A zone five block for Camden Gianni. There's a reason he won gold with Team USA at the Pan Am Final Six in Edmonton, Alberta. Camden Gianni has done it on the national step, on the national level, the global level. He was doing it when he was just a young freshman at the high school level. He's done it everywhere. Klein blocked again, but it smartly ridden out by Kayla Blanchett, who is another freshman. I mean, you go down the line, it's a very opposing thing to what GCU has. A lot of veterans, a lot of players have been doing it for a while. Klein, sophomore, Roberts, freshman. Paulson, one of the only veterans on this team. Hickman, well done. Klein keeps it up somehow. Roberts sends it over. Free ball for the Lopes. Herndon, slight, Thorne. Kept alive, well done by the Trojans. Ball over again. Some momentum now building for USC as they pick up two in a row. Yeah, Houston, and as you were talking about, there are a lot of freshmen on this USC team and they're really showing up and showing out. USC was actually was named number one recruiting class by VolleyballMag.com just because of how excellent these freshmen are coming in and being strong forces of nature for the USC team. Kept alive, sideline ball down. USC now talking a little smack. And that Service now coming from Paulson at 2020. Slight, Thorne, I tell you what, I mean, you might as well go to that again and again and again. It doesn't matter if it looks like a broken record, it is working right now. The Lopes will continue to beat a dead horse if it continues to spew the result it is right now. Absolutely, just such strength from that middle hitting position. Really working for the Lopes. Jordan Lucas was a catalyst for a lot of points at the end of set number two. We'll see if he can do it again. Rodgers almost keeps it up, but can't quite do it. 21-21, and we are just trading points back and forth. Lucas, a quick stint. Thorne checks out as well. Herndon back in. Service from Roberts into the net. Mm. 
Dangerous territory here as Camden Gianni steps behind the service line for the Antelopes in a big moment. Really good serve, but an even better dig. Off the block. Rogers is there. Herndon. Awkward for Hickman. Kept alive. Klein for the back corner. Gianni keeps it alive. Near side, Hickman. Still alive. Up again. It should be a double hit, and the Lopes are calling for it, but they might get the point anyway, and they do. Carter Rogers extends the lead to two. 23-21, two away from going up 2-1. And a prime time Friday night matchup here in Phoenix. Well, we thought we might see a challenge from the Antelopes if that point went the other direction, but USC perhaps saw something. Might be one of those situations where you want a timeout anyway, so you might as well go ahead and throw down the challenge card. And if you weren't here in set number one, you're getting your first chance to look at the shoe game from the USC Trojans coaching staff. The red and black MJs looking good. Would love to see a little yellow in there. Oh, Sport yeah. Sport the team colors, you know. Get all three. All three, red, black, and yellow. And white. Four colors. Could, ha could have them all, Bella. Quick conversation, and the point goes to GCU. 23-21 does go the score. So Cam and Gianni just two away from closing out this third set. Gianni with a power serve. Smith, Herndon, Hickman, oh no. Almost found a way to put it together. Couldn't quite do it. We talk so much about how powerful Camden Gianni is. You almost have to give more credit to guys like Austin Stewart and Noah Roberts for being able to control those balls. Absolutely. I mean, that's a lot of energy coming at you and to be able to kind of put that backspin on and, and allow that energy to be cushioned and allowed to push back. And that is frustrating for Matt Worley and the GCU coaching staff because there's a miscue from Cooper Herndon and just like that, it is 23-23, two straight points from the Trojans. Herndon in better position this time. Wardlow, set point here in set number three for GCU. Jackson Hickman to take us to a fourth set. Too much, no tip, point, G, C, U. 25, 23, go the Antelopes. And that will take, and so there, you tune in in three years, this, this matchup might look a little different, but on GCU side of things as well, they might not have exactly the youth that USC does, but there's still a lot of up and coming players and guys on the bench tonight that are incredibly talented. They're not even showcasing yet. Herndon, a slight to Thorne. Good start. How the third set ends, the fourth set begins with a Cameron Thorne kill. Making his case for player of the game tonight. I mean, man. Definitely a possibility there. Gianni, Thorne, slight to Hickman, up and down for 16, two to zero here to start set number four. All the energy in the building with the Antelopes right now. Hickman just comes in with such great power, just a line shot to the USC defense. Near side ball, Hain off the block and down, perfectly executed. I tell you what, you talk about the impressive night so far for Cameron Thorne. The most impressive part of it, he's hitting the .917. 12 attempts, 11 kills. He has been incredibly productive tonight, but also efficient. He has not had a whole lot of opportunities go awry for him so far.
Hernan, good dig. Wardlow, blink and you'll miss it, folks. Rico Wardlow extends the lead to three to one. Quicker than Lightning McQueen in cars. Kid Chow right there. Such an excellent show of strength. I don't think, is Rico Wardlow sponsored by Resties? I don't think he is, but I thought maybe. I mean, there might be a deal a, in the it's works. A real, it's a real company, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> if not, somebody needs to make that happen. NIL's a thing, yeah? We can make that work. Oh, yeah. 3-2. Lopes with this early advantage. It's all about just keeping a little bit of cushion. You don't have to extend it crazy, but just continue to build that lead. And that will certainly help. Jackson Hickman, four to two. He's having himself quite the night as well. Not as efficient, but 13 kills on 23 attempts. That's pretty darn good. Hickman, near side ball, Hain blocked. Wardlow smartly slows things down. Wardlow, oh my goodness! The highlight is ruined because of a beautiful defensive play from USC, and Wardlow says, never mind. Ah, I want the point anyway. Three-point lead for GCU. If you miss that, we probably won't see it on the replay. There, there it is. <laughs> Slight, the fake hit goes for the set instead, and then Rico Wardlow finishes things off. We saw that a couple of years ago with Christian Janke and Cole Udall, and it has remained a staple of GCU. They pull it out two or three times a game, and it almost always works, adding some style to the game of volleyball. Service error cuts the lead back to just two. Well, if a two-set or a two-match sweep of BYU didn't put the world on notice, Taken down, USC certainly would. Carter Rogers off the block and down, especially if they can find a way to do it today, which is still a long volleyball to be played, a lot of work to do. If they could take him down tomorrow as well, it'd be a, an incredibly successful yet again weekend, pushing the Lopes to what would be 14-0. But right now, they're just looking to close things out against a stingy USC defense right now. Klein kept alive by Hickman. And then Klein just sends it down. <laughs> the one thing I love about this GCU team, and you see it with USC as well, USC is a little bit more calm and collected. They don't show as much emotion. In times they do, but GCU is just so animated all the time. You see Jackson Hickman. If you didn't know this team, you would think that these guys hate each other by the amount <laughs> that they yell at each other. But it's all in love. It's a brothership out there. <laughs> Cameron Thorne. Right in the area, no, Roberts, you don't want to be hit. Perfectly done from Cameron Thorne. He's just so strong from this position. I mean, he finds that hole. Noah Roberts just doesn't even have time to react. That ball is down so quickly as Nick Slight heads back to serve. Side ball, Klein. And they didn't get a tip on it. I believe Klein just mishit it. Maybe see a challenge card here if Klein thinks so, but. Jeff Nygaard thinking about it. I tell you what, we've seen Klein do that a lot tonight. He gets up and pokes it off the block and down, but that time it looked like he mishit it. Let's see if a challenge card does come. Doesn't appear to. Nygaard just going to ride it out. But as we were talking about with GCU, these guys just enjoy the sport so much, and they're so close off the court. They feel like they can do anything, and they hold each other accountable, which is so important. Hickman to Gianni. A miss hit, a rare miscue from GCU. Blanchett now back for USC. Right into the net, 9-5. Well, USC's got to get going. And I think the only answer 
is to go to Wesley Smith in the middle. He's been on the bench for a little bit now, but he was the guy that the Lopes couldn't shut down in that first set. They instead tried to go to their star in Dylan Klein, and it's worked a little bit, but not to the success rate that Wesley Smith had in the first set. So I think a timeout's coming here from Jeff Nygaard in the next couple of points, and then I think you try to get Wesley Smith involved. That seems to be the only answer, and Jeff Nygaard right here will take a timeout, which means we will take our first break of this fourth set. This string of momentum for GCU. Good serve. Paulson pokes it to the back corner. Gianni keeps it alive. Slight slide ball to Gianni. Doesn't quite do what they wanted. Too much. And the timeout from Jeff Nygaard doesn't get the result that they wanted. And the Lopes go up six, which is their largest advantage in any set tonight. Miss hit. That time from Dylan Klein. The frustration is building on the side of the Trojans. Got to find a way to keep their composure and try to scratch and claw their way back into this one because they've got the momentum to do it, or the potential, excuse me. Momentum is what they are lacking right now. Jack Duker, into the game. Hasn't had the night that he's wanted either. He's only got two kills. He's hitting in the negatives, and he is the second most kill leader for USC. So the Lopes on that front have done a good job of shutting him down. Rogers, right at Austin Stewart, near side ball. Set down! They tried to get Duker going, and it did not work out. 13-5. The difference between Carter Rogers this year compared to these last couple of years is the consistency of his serving has slowly continued to rise. Far side ball, Hickman kept alive, and that's what has allowed Matt Worley to play him a little bit more. Slight thorn, perfect. You don't need anything more than that. It's simple, concise, perfect volleyball. Well, I mean, it, you look at this play, and it's honestly just so impressive because Cam Cameron Thorne was about to just hit something, turns around quick, and comes down for the kill with such effort and such fluidity that he's in full force right now. Too much from Carter Rogers. 14 to 6. It's gonna happen for USC, it's gotta happen right now. A, a service error gives you the tiniest sliver of hope and you have to capitalize. Slight to Thorne, just his second attempt of the night that doesn't hit the court. Rogers is in a good spot. Gianni. Paulson for Blanchette. Switch that, well done. Yeah, GCU disagrees with that call towards the end. Thought he grabbed it and pushed it down, but they're not going to get the call. Klein, slight thorn, miss hits, and there's no touch from USC. So Jackson Hickman kind of pulls everyone into a circle and says, all right, that's three straight out of the timeout. We're getting a little antsy here. Let's pull it together and get the job done. This is a danger too. If you're US or if you're GCU, this USC team is really good. They start get going, it's dangerous. A momentum killer right there from Jackson Hickman, well done. We talked about how sometimes these young teams struggle to pull it together in these close moments because you don't have that much experience playing together and you're just not that experienced in these big moments. Right now, USC trying to do their best to weather the storm. Duker, Gianni, and your side, Hain, well done. 
Yeah, he's, I mean, in, the, in these moments of high intensity, this is where these freshmen and this younger team from the USC side is g gaining experience in these later parts of the game. But GCU, with such experience, with such upperclassmen count, that they are just able to kind of reset after every play. Next play, next play, next set, next set. And that's important as you're trying to win these games. 16 to nine after a service error. And the Jihani and the boys after a rough first set have turned things around and been pretty dominant through these last three sets. Gianni, nobody talks, nobody goes to the ball. And Gianni picks up yet another service ace. Anytime they play Goosebumps by Travis Scott after a kill, you know something good just happened, Bella. <laughs> Gianni would love back-to-back. -back. And he's gonna get it! Camden Gianni, back-to-back -back service aces. That will move him. Lopes finally playing with that swag. USC got three points out of the timeout. Saw a glimmer. And since then, the Lopes have shut it all down. Far side ball, Dukert. Slide is there. Herndon is there, looking for Gianni from the back row. Dukert. Rogers, slight. Wardlow, well done defensively. Both Duker and Wesley Smith are there. 6'11", 6'9", it is tough to get the ball over that block. Service from Duker. Too much. Nineteen ten. Block rises up. Herndon is there. Man, he's been good tonight. Gianni oh, just jumped a little too early. He can jump pretty high. I don't think he can necessarily glide in the air like some other players, some other athletes. He certainly can. But when the ball is hanging in the air for that long, he couldn't quite corral it. 19-11. Well, and at times I feel like it could be dangerous, you know, something some off timing can put the player at, at a risk for dangerous injuries. Oh, this will be a challenge from Matt Worley. Uh, I'd be, I, actually it's not going to be, it looks like Matt, head coach Matt Worley wants to ho hang on to his timeout, doesn't want to lose a challenge either. Trust his team up seven. Nick Slight was very confident that they would have won that challenge. Disagreed with the call heavily, but instead they'll ride it with this unit. Rogers! Talk about gliding and flying through the air. It's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's Carter Rogers. 2012. Lopes with an eight point advantage, looking to close things out and improve the 12 and 0. Ward low, the roll serve. Our side ball. Block down! Cameron Thorne, it's a block party! And the Trojans were not invited. 21-12. What a play from Cameron Thorne. Cameron Thorne still showing up and showing out even later into this game. Been so consistent throughout this game for the Lopes. Our side ball, Klein, the back hit. Slight far side, Rogers pokes it off the block and down. USC says no touch. So Jeff Nygaard might challenge. And he's going to. Going to get a free timeout out of it regardless, so. Challenge coming from USC. Looks like multiple players 
pretty quickly said, no, coach, I didn't touch the ball. It's one of those things where if you're doing it and there's no cameras and there's that one kid who did touch it and he's just trying to sink in with everybody else and say, yeah, yeah, nobody touched it. But in this moment, if you are that player and you did touch the ball, there's about 40 cameras on the play. I think you should just own up and tell your coach, hey, coach, no, 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 I, I definitely touched it. We're going to lose this challenge. But nobody did that for USC. So you're hoping and praying if you're a Trojan fan that this lead is at eight instead of 10. You'd need a miracle either way. But we've seen crazier things. Lope's got some slick shoe game as well. Oh, yeah. Can't give the Trojans all the credit on the sneakerhead fandom. Got to give a couple. Look at that coaching staff for the Lopes as well, rocking the low top Nikes. I'd give you a make or model, but I have no clue. <laughs> well, that unity, you know, does come from the top, which is their coaching staff. And as one of the players says, that the reason for their unity is because that they have such a good coaching staff that brings it all together. Cameron Thorne says that they wouldn't be there without their coaching staff right now and, and the leadership that they've shown. So I can see with Matt Worley reading his lips there, he's, he's saying he said he touched it. And he's just talking about the USC players one player in particular who was talking to the GCU players admitting to the fact that he did touch the ball. And so that's why Matt Worley and the coaching staff are saying that's a pretty bad missed call right there. Can't see it on that one. Regardless, the coaching staff not happy. So the lead goes to 21-13 instead. Still just four away are the Lopes. Slight near side, Gianni, perfect. Camden Gianni continues to build his stat sheet as well. Nick Slight, not a serve, just three away. Now, Carter Rogers and all of the GCU Antelopes were finally happy to be back in A to Z in front of the GCU fans, and they have showed out. 208 now are the Lopes. Please Carter said, being the second ranked country, second ranked team in the country, has been a privilege for a program like us. We aren't a big name school like UCLA or Hawaii, so we don't take this ranking lightly. All the work they have put in has continued to build to these moments and they want to capitalize. Man, they are looking good tonight. But the Trojans, this is not the end of the road. So much volleyball left to be played. If the Trojans can't find a way to get this one done and take us to a fifth, you got to still feel really good if you are a fan of the red and yellow. A lot of work left to do, but a lot of volleyball left to play. A slight to Gianni, kept alive by Paulson. And over and down. So the lead back to just 8, 25, 15. Ryan Sprague has played some consistent minutes tonight as well. The sophomore out of Manhattan Beach. He played alongside Dylan Clyde. Both of them played at Loyola High School, teammates for many years. Side out to the Lopes. Well, they were seventh in the preseason ranking coming into the year. And these Lopes said, hey, we appreciate the nod, but we're better than you think. We might even be better than we think. And they got a chance to prove it right here. Rogers, big serve. Man, he wanted it to end it right there. Tip off the block. Rogers, Gianni, Herndon. It would be storybook. Far side ball. Klein, he misses it. And what a finish to just what will be one chapter of this year's story for the GCU men's volleyball team, 25-15, a fourth.